13. All right, here we go. All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Topic Time with Harrison Young, the uh, November 9th edition. Yes, it's November, and it is getting chilly out there, I have to say. Uh, but uh, we, we keep things hot in here all year round, and uh, now that the holidays are approaching, we, we have a beautiful young lady as the guest here tonight. This is Mariah Cummings. And I got to say, I'm, I, you know, we'll talk about she does a lot of things. She's just gotten into modeling, and she's really good at it. I've seen some pictures. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, you know, I, you can't be bad at it, so you got to be good at it. <laughs> she's, uh, she's a drum player, I guess. We're going to talk yes, all about that. She uh, just told me she's going to be going to this island in Mexico. Um, and we're going to cover all the stuff tonight. We're going to learn about her. And uh, so, Mariah, thanks for coming in. No problem. Happy to be here. Happy to have you here. You know, we... Now, a few months ago, I, I reached out to you, I think, I think it was like May or June, and I, mm -hmm. at that time, I wasn't really clear on what you were doing. I knew, you know, I thought you might have been modeling, but then I saw a picture of you, it looked like you were working at a kiosk at a mall. Yes, I was. So, okay. um, so talk about that, and then we'll, right. then we'll work a little further <laughs> forward to the present. Sure. Okay. okay. So um, I work at a place called Piercing Pagoda. Um, I pierce ears and I sell jewelry. I, well, I have a question right off the bat. Do you have to have a license to, to, per, to, to prick <laughs> skin with a needle, which is basically what you're doing? Do you actually do um, body piercings? I know, I know you have one yourself. I only you know. do ears. That is all. Um, oh, okay. In Massachusetts, you can, like through our company, um, it's called Piercing University, okay. and you go through this training program where right. they'll train you how to pierce ears. And you'll practice on um, various like fake ears also in advance until you're very comfortable to pierce somebody. Okay. But I only do anything on the outer ear. When they, uh, when they, when they <laughs> let you practice, do they put a little recorder so you can hear a scream to go as well? <laughs> I mean, no, no but... I'll, I'll let him know. I'll let my manager know that. Yeah, it's probably a good ideas. Idea. Okay. All right. So that's what you were doing, and uh, now, then, you, when did you stop modeling recently? I mean, I know it was. It wasn't it this year, or was it? Was it yeah. Oh, um, okay. Well, I started probably around the end of June. Okay. Um, and what got you into it? Who got you into it? And honestly, what got you? I know you're a pretty girl, but um, it was probably more to it. Well, a friend of mine I had seen um, that I had gone to high school with shot with um, a guy named Peter. Peter and, Bucera, I know yes. him well. Yep. So um, she shot with him, and I saw the pictures, and I thought they came out awesome. Okay. And then I noticed that um, he had a picture on his profile with um, a drummer. And it's like this female drummer who's awesome. Now you, it's like now very you, now famous. you do drums too. Now you've been you've been drumming yes. for a long time. Oh yeah, I've I've been drumming for around ten years now. Okay, that's great. So uh, so we'll, we'll stay on the subject and we'll go back to yep. the drumming when you started. <laughs> so you thought to yourself, okay, let me just see if I get this straight. You saw, oh, this girl is a drummer. I'm a drummer. Yeah. I'm a model. This girl looks good. I look good. Yep, cool. and I saw Peter. that Peter had a picture with a famous drummer that I admire. So famous, I like the I know, photo. Anyone I might have heard of? Uh, Maytel Cohen. Yeah, sounds good. I think familiar. that's how you say it. I don't know. Her drumming is amazing. Wow. But either way, she's very good. And yep. I saw that he had a picture with her. So I liked the picture and I commented on it, like something like this, yep. something like that. Um, yep. And he like reached out to me or something and asked me if I'd ever be interested in modeling. And he was posting about this concept that he wanted to work on and asked me if I would be interested in doing that concept. Okay. So I was like, oh gosh, like what I'm was, not what really. What was the concept, though? It was, um, it was just like some basic modeling, and then the idea of being like a mannequin, okay, um, just kind of looking like a doll. And well, the picture I saw, you were flying in the air. You were suspended in, Which in a one? bikini. Oh, that one was a different photo shoot with him. Okay. But that, yeah, that but the later, first right? one, yes. Okay. So that one um, was probably like my second or third one that I had done with him. Okay. But the first one um, was kind of a focus on like being a doll and society's expectations on women physically and just looking like uh, like a mannequin, literally just like a mannequin. Well, you know, that's deep. <laughs> that is really deep. That is, that is so cool because you, were, you weren't just, you know, you weren't just showing skin, you were conveying a message. Exactly. Yeah, so, um, cool. so like I was all like blurred out and everything and the pictures came out really, really well. And um, I think the, what got me into the whole modeling aspect of it was the message behind it. It was very empowering 
to think of like what society's expectations on women really are and I've always been someone that wants to lift others up especially women knowing how how difficult it is to just be a girl nowadays honestly it always and, uh, was from what I hear yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. okay. I mean I can only imagine so yep. I think that like well, you can only imagine you are a girl you shouldn't, yeah. you shouldn't have to imagine you know <laughs> yeah no I know I mean that. like back in oh, in your days in my day well <laughs> but I, um yeah. But regardless, I think that if he had just approached me asking if I wanted to model, I probably would have just respectfully declined because I faced my own insecurities and just my own path of self-love and empowerment has not been the most like smooth path I understand. ever. But at the same time, like when he conveyed to me what his idea was, it was super appealing to think like I could be somebody that could help empower other people through like myself. And I think that that was like the best thing ever because being able to do that is like very rewarding to help other people and to see like them say, you made a difference in the way I think about this or I'm more confident in my own body. Um, because obviously you can't tell like from a screen, but I'm five, three and a half. Um, and I'm like not the skinniest person ever. Um, I have nine tattoos. I got my nose pierced. My ears are pierced all the way up. So like it's not the stereotypical like model that you would see in Vogue or something like that. So I figured that I would take that responsibility to just convey myself and express myself. And if people accepted it, awesome. I'm glad that they have so far. But if people didn't, that's okay too. Because like in the end, it's not about seeking somebody's approval. It's about being okay with yourself and comfortable in your own skin. So wow. Peter helped me convey that early on uh, awesome. before I'd ever modeled before in my life really. Okay. Well, you see, boy, you're so, I mean, you, you're, told, you're 19 years old and you're very articulate and you sound very confident. And yet somehow I get the feeling that even, even that being the case is that when you were younger, you had a hard time, you had a tough go of it. Just, so, I don't know, there's something about you that gives me the impression that, that you know, you, that social, the social skills didn't, didn't always, you know, you know maybe, you, maybe you were a little too outgoing. Maybe people were, maybe you found, people found you intimidating. Is that true? I'm just yeah. wondering. Well, just, I'm just good read. To, okay, um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know exactly how personal I'll get on your show, but I'll give you like a rundown. Go ahead, um, please, if you would. So, hmm, I'm trying to think. All right, so I guess like generally growing up, um, or anyone watching this that went to school with me will probably agree, that like I was outgoing, but I was also a very like insecure kind of person. Well, I kind of figured that too. Well, people yeah, close but, to me, like people that were close to me could see my insecurities a little bit more clearly, okay. but I was never one to be like, oh, I'm so fat, or oh no, like I'm so ugly, and like fish for compliments or anything right. like that. But at the same time, like I was never the kind of person to want to dress up and like look nice and everything. I'd pretty much like plaster makeup on my face because I thought that what was underneath was so much more terrifying than what my eyeliner looked like freshman year, which was awful. And well, maybe you can put a picture in later. I can, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but honestly, like I just had a very unrealistic warped perception of myself through various things. And I think a lot of that is that like teenage girls are ruthless and middle school girls are also pretty ruthless. Oh. And bullying is a very real problem. And unless somebody directly experiences it, I don't think they understand just like what the gravity of that problem is. Um, and I faced like a lot of things. Um, freshman year until about junior year, I battled an eating disorder. Really? And no matter wow. how skinny I got, when you could see every rib in my body and everything, I just like thought I looked fat all the time. Yeah, and yeah, even wow. when I knew I was kind of skinny at that point, I didn't think it was good enough. So um, yeah, I mean, honestly, like that was difficult. Right. Um, Going through that and then helping other people, like helping my friends through their problems. I, ironically enough, helped a really close friend of mine through an eating disorder as well. Yep. But I was also battling it. So it was so hard. And I think a wake-up call for me was, like, why am I setting such a poor example for someone I care about so deeply? And the well, second... everything happens for a reason. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. Sure. But I guess, like, that's a great way to look at it. Yep. Um, well, you know, it was kind of like it was a team. It was a team effort between you. It was like you, you, you know, you, re you, you, you had an, you had an epiphany kind of. It's like okay, I can help. This. I, I, I gotta if I can if I can swing this around to help her, I can help myself too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think. Um, I think like something that I know sets me a little bit apart from a lot of people is that some people have an insecurity and that causes them to wish negativity on others and that causes them I to... I don't, I know it. I know it Yeah, and especially too. with yeah. like a girl, like yeah. 
being like, all right, like I feel so ugly. And then you'll look at someone that's like very gorgeous or naturally pretty, doesn't wear makeup at all and struts the hallways super and you confident. Bring them down. And you want to be yeah, like, I oh, I hate that person. And you know you don't hate them, but I think what, especially when you're young or going through your teenage years, right. like it's challenging to want to support that person. But despite all of my insecurities and just anything that I was enduring on my path to accepting myself, I never really wanted to shoot anybody else down. That's I would see someone following their passion and the only thought I'd have is like, I wish I could do it that like that well, or I wish I could have the confidence to do that. And honestly, actually, just I told her I'd shout her out as well, but this Go is ahead. a perfect moment to. Um, I have a 10-year-old sister, and her name is Savannah Banana, and cool. she has Savannah always, Banana? Oh, yeah. Oh, I just call her Banana. Real, oh, yeah, that's what you call yeah. her. Okay, I, yeah. cool. <laughs> I mean, well, the names are here nowadays. I Some like of them it. are pretty interesting. Names but are cool. Yeah, I just call her Banana. Okay. But um, she has always exhibited this level of confidence that was like, and it wasn't like I no one wanted to shoot it down, but it was like, how are you this confident? Like, she's 10 years old telling me, like, what outfits would look good on me if something's, like, not my color. And I remember, like, wanting to instill that confidence in her, but okay. she didn't really need much help because she's just, like, a very outgoing, awesome person. Sounds like and, she's quite an inspiration Oh, she, obviously, but, yeah. Nah, this, <laughs> but this leads me to ask you. Now, you said you've been playing drums since you were 10, so yes. she was probably just born then. If she was a little, she was a baby then. Yeah, I mean, right. yeah, it was definitely so, a what, so how did you get, so that's unusual for a child to start doing, I mean, it sounds to me, anybody that, you know, a drum, a drum is a very percussion, percussionist instrument. So, mm -hmm. and per, people that like to play the percussion like to make, like have a statement to make. And I'm guessing that you did too. <laughs> so how did you get, how did you get into the drums at 10? Well, um, all right, this is actually hilarious. That's so good. a lot of people have something they're passionate about and there's right. some really interesting story about how they got there and yep. how they pursued it and some sign from the gods. But here's mine, which is kind of funny. Um, so I was in fourth grade yep. and I, an announcement came on the uh, intercom in my elementary school yep. and it was like, if you want to audition to play drums in the school band, go down to the band room right now. So I thought it was wicked cool to get out of class and right ditch class moment, and stuff. Too. Even though, like, wow. I did well in school and everything, it was so funny because I'm thinking, like, I could be a total, like, rebel right now and just leave class and go to the band room. It just gets me out of so history good, right now. <laughs> yeah, right? And so I go down, and I, she just had us, um, like, drumming on the floor with, sure. like, mismatched drumsticks. Okay. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I mean, it was cool. Like, I, I like drums and everything, but it wasn't exactly, like, calling out to me. And all of a sudden, she pulled me aside, and she You're was like... About, this is the lady that's, that was the band leader? My band director, band yes. Band director, okay. And she's like, Mariah, you. And she picks me out, and then she asks me, is there anybody else here that you think has a good enough sense of rhythm to okay. be part of this. Yep. And I'm like, whoa, you're putting a big responsibility on someone who's like 10 right now, right? Like, it was, it was ridiculous. I'm like, what do you mean, me? I'm not special. I was just getting out of class here. And um, then the rest is history. Then I just started going to rehearsals and stuff. Wow. I got myself a drum. Um, it came pretty naturally to me. Um, this my, is like half your life you've been doing this Oh, now. yeah, yeah, wow. exactly. So um, my grandmother is actually, she was a piano teacher for okay. 36 years. And she go. taught at Cambridge Ringe in Latin. Yep. Um, and my cousin actually took over for her, so it's kind of in the family. Sure. So I've been playing piano since I was about three. Well, have you, are you wanna, now, all right, now, oh, you play piano too? Yes. <laughs> I took piano lessons for seven years, and I really? actually, well. Really? You're going to get a keyboard up here. <laughs> well, the problem, and I was told I was talented, but my problem was a couple of things. First of all, I wasn't that confident. Number, number one, I could play some songs from memory. And number two, I didn't practice at all. I couldn't commit myself. <laughs> So one day in 1973, when I was 14, I was hiding in the closet when my teacher came, and I, I didn't have the heart to tell him. I, I'd fallen behind three years in my studies, and I finally, you know, when you do something over and over again for seven yeah. years, you, you keep doing it, even if you feel that it's not working. So when he finally hired me, they finally said, okay, you really don't want to take lessons, do you? After, <laughs> from 1965 to 73, we, we'd been taking lessons, and I said, I really don't. Oh, man. Yeah, but, but then again, I found other things to do. But you, were, but you started, at your age, you were, at such a young age, you were able to commit yourself to something, and here you still are doing it, and that's awesome. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I, I had also seen, um, like, videos of are our you high school. you band, by the way? Man. Um, you were in the drum and bugle corps, right? I, I marched drum corps for a year. Okay, um, I marched any... 7th Regiment. Um, okay. I didn't do it last season. I'm kind of on the fence about doing it again this season just because of all the other commitments. And okay. it is an expensive activity. Right. Um, and it also requires like a lot of time and yes, effort. Yes, I know. I actually, in. believe it or not, I had a girlfriend that lived right around the corner from here and was on the drum and bugle corps. Oh, so wow. That is awesome. She actually dragged me to a show back on Sunday, August 15th of 1982 at the uh, BC. And I had a good time. A lot of pretty girls out there. I just pretended <laughs> I was watching the Pats game and it was halftime. 
<laughs> that's awesome, actually. Well, you know what? I think um, the marching arts are something that, that what, that's what you're doing, right? Or what? what and might yeah. Do well, again. I play drum okay. set. Um, okay. I mean, I love playing drum set and everything. Drum right. corps was a lot of fun for me. Like it was, it was amazing. Sure. Just people like become your family when you're spending so much time with them. That. Spending and an entire travel, entire summer too, together, right? traveling and everything. Yeah. Like the amount of inside jokes I'll still like have come up in my head, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like. And I like really care about these people, and I think that when you have the same passion as somebody, right. and you can you can relate on a common goal, you can come together in a way that's pretty much like family, and you can bond with those people because your goal is the same. So you're you don't have any notion where you're like I need to bring that person down because if you bring that person down, you're bringing bring the entire down group too. down. Right, exactly. exactly. So I think that like. It was one of the most rewarding experiences, like to march a drum corps and yep. be able to experience that sense of family, and also the physical requirements that you had to meet and push yourself. Like I was very intimidated by that. Well, especially how so? What, what were those requirements? Well, every drum corps is different, but I'll tell you a little bit about how like okay. our days were like typically set up. Okay. So um, typically, like if it was like a show day or rehearsal day, it was something like you'd wake up between like. I mean, maybe like between five and seven, depending wow. on if it was like a parade day or not and what you were doing. Right. Um, and then you would do PT, like physical training in the morning. Wow. Um, and then you would eat breakfast. Yeah, you have to be in good shape to do that, don't you? Oh, definitely. And yeah. if you're not, you're going to be whipped into shape real quick. Yeah. But I think what was or so awesome. Or you're going to have to drop out either one. Exactly. Yeah. But it, it was surprising how many people really just like banded together. Like people want their peers to do well and right. like lift each other up because in the end, it like it really just complements the group as a whole yep. and it adds to the character of the entire ensemble. So I think that, um, yeah, so, okay, so back to the schedule, I guess. So um, you wake up in the morning right. and you eat breakfast and everything. Then you have a few hours of what, what we would call block. Right. Um, and that could consist of either practicing marching technique. Um, it would consist of uh, working on music and just playing focuses yep. or it could be like a number of things. It, just like things that would make you better and right. things that you could work on to work on this finished product of like a like 10 to 15 minute show. Right, wow. Um, so yeah, and it's awesome because there's different sections and everything and sure. they would all have to come together and do like, do their, like take responsibility for what they needed to do as an individual in order to benefit the group. So if you weren't carrying your weight, like it was very highly encouraged that you did that because in the end you're only helping everybody around you. Cool. And if those people become family, like obviously you're going to want to help your family reach what their goal is. That's so. right. Well, it sounds to me it's awesome because, you know, it's, a lot of times when you're in a team situation, you could, it could be a cutthroat thing too where you're at, where you're at, where you're, well, you don't want to, you know, you may be a person who feels bitter and that you want to put the other people down, but obviously not so with what you were doing in this case, at least yeah. with you. Well, I mean, I think the biggest thing was for me is that, like, I went into it yeah. and I, all I knew was that I loved drumming and that I wanted to march drum corps. And I didn't really know, like, how to practice in a way that was efficient that would benefit my playing the most. I didn't know how to really, like... I mean, interact with all these people I didn't know because, like, as far as I knew, I was very insecure. I thought that, like, I was awful. I, I had dated someone in high school that convinced me that I was awful at drumming and that I should just quit. Oh, that's nice. And I was like, what do you mean? Because it was what I was most passionate about. So um, once I really just started actively pursuing it and when I grew from that situation, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to be the best I can possibly be, not only in spite of you, but just to, like, better myself. And, right. and like, just, like, become further immersed in my own passion. So I auditioned for a drum corps and everything. And like when I got into 7th Regiment, it was awesome. But then I was like, all right, where do I go from here? Because I didn't have any really like, I didn't know much about physical training, like how to, how to practice. Like I said, like there's ways that you can practice, right. like obviously music. And it's not just repeating the same thing. It's like how you go about doing that and what time you spend on that. Um, and it's hard. Like it is difficult. It is. Well, but did you feel that your, you know, that your early experience in drums helped you a lot? It must have. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Drumming as a whole helped me, but I would honestly, I, I would attribute my experience with drum corps with how, with my confidence level today, right. with everything, because people really encourage you to. If you're not confident, like you better fake it well enough, because especially drumming, yeah. like. I, in the beginning, like, and arguably toward the end, like, I looked like a deer in headlights when I played. Every insecurity I had, you could see in my face, regardless of, you, like, if you could see it in my hands or not. So right. wow. it was definitely, like, you want to, like, look intimidating. You want to look fierce, like you're confident so much in what you're doing that no one's going to break you and no one's going to keep you from playing what you're doing well. Wow. And I think that that taught me that, like, if you're not confident, like, you better fake it. And But at the same time, be real about it. Like, I think that it's a common misconception, like, the fake it till you make it quote can be, like, misconstrued as something, like, just, like, you need to be fake and put on a, a front all the time. 
if that makes sense. It does make sense. And you really shouldn't yeah. do that. But I think for me is um, fake it till you make it means to me that like you should put yourself in situations out of your comfort zone. Right. Because that's where growth happens. You're nothing not the first happens. person to say that on my show, so I get oh, it. Oh, good. Yeah, oh, yeah that's yeah. awesome. Because yeah. like nothing happens in your comfort zone. Like when you're comfortable, you get bored. And when you get bored, if you're not confident you're not enough anymore. to step out of your comfort right. zone, like then you're not going to grow at all. And then in the end, you're just going to feel like really like sad about it and of upset. Course. So I think for me, like drum corps taught me confidence, right. how to carry yeah. myself in a way that if I, if I had stuff going on in like, you know, work or school or something else, like I could focus on something in that moment that cool. was like my job in that moment. Right. Like, I mean, it's not that like no one cared about your life around you and everything, but like when you came to rehearsal, you came with every issue aside. Like it didn't matter what was happening with your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. It didn't matter what was happening at home or at work or at Shovel school. Shovel rug. Exactly. You just okay. leave it, you pick up your drum and you go and you try to like improve as best you can with the wow. people that you're with. So I think that that like taught me a lot. Cool. I think if it wasn't for my experience with that, I would not be modeling right now. And it's crazy how what you learn through that translates into your life as a whole. Yeah. Like holding yourself to a higher standard is so important. And I think for me, like there's even days where I'll wake up and be like, what am I doing? And like, it's all about your attitude toward it. Like, you can be like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Or you can be like, what am I doing today? Like, what's happening? And be ready for what's coming at you. Yeah, exactly. And everyone has those, like, ups and downs and everything. We sure do. I but know. I mean... I have my routine every day, too. I've been, you know, and every day I wake up and I say, oh, I'm still alive. No, oh, boy. All right, no, but I'm happy. Yeah, you could be like, oh, just another day. Well, or you could be like, just another well, day. It's interesting, you know, because, you know, in my case, I look back and I, you know, when I was your age, I didn't even think I'd live as long as I have. And, I've, and, I'm, mm -hmm. and I think right now, I, based on my experience, everything's just getting better and better. And, that's you know, awesome. Yeah, I, you were telling me before the show. That's right. awesome. Yeah, and, and that's, you know, and by the time you're in your 50s or whatever, you'll, you'll be doing the same thing. I just, you know, you, won't have, you don't need to have a midlife crisis because you don't, you know, you <laughs> love what you're doing. Well, I think a big thing is like, I mean, I, I drive my boyfriend crazy with the amount of things I want to do. Like, and well, 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 talk about your boyfriend. He's right here. All right. Hey, what, Dave. How, so, how, so how did that come to be? Well, obviously, you guys have a lot in common. He seems like, he seems like he's a little quieter than you are, but that's okay. If you want yeah, to well, attract. You know, I think that like opposites attract in a lot of ways. Right. But I mean, he's just an awesome person. Like, oh, yeah. Between, I mean, hanging out, like initially we were like, we listened to a lot of the same music. There and you then go. what we didn't listen to that was the same, we'd just be like, oh, check out this song. Have you heard what this band's up to and everything? So, like, as a musician, you were it's. We're friends and it became. Exactly. Right, I so, it's so funny to me as a musician how he's a better music listener than I am. And I don't mean that as like I'm a bad music listener either. He just. No, like, but you're a better musician. Does he play music at all? No, okay, but he has but a he, sense of rhythm. But, he could drum if he wanted to. Well, there you go. And plus, he understands, you know, he, he, he gets you and that makes it easy exactly. for you too. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's amazing to have his support. And of course. I think that, um, so like early on, like we listened to like a lot of the same music and right. like we would, um, oh my gosh, Dave, I'm going to tell them, not that he can really have any say in what I'm telling you right now. <laughs> so um, there was one time where I'm hanging out and I was at like my other friend's house okay. and I was playing this video game and he wouldn't let me play it. And it was Bioshock. So, and I don't, I don't expect you to have heard of it. I don't know it. what that is, but Bioshock is like... a game on Xbox where you pretty much like... Just, you're like shooting at things and there's zombies Sounds like involved. a violent game. It's, yeah. yeah, but it's okay. really fun. So well, he was playing so it and I was like, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was, I was like, I want to play. And he was like, no, no, I don't want to. So I'm texting Dave or whatever. I'm like, I'm so mad. Like my friend will let me play this game. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And he was like, oh, I have that game. And oh, I'm like, oh my gosh. He's like, yeah, I have all three I'm like games we'll in that series. Out. And he's like, if you want to come play it, whatever. So like Why next not? day, drive on back and play some Bioshock. Okay. And like, then we just start, that was like our video game. Like we would just sit there, eat some Everyone food. If people have a song, you have a like, video game. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't think of it that way, but that's pretty, oh, yeah, that's yeah. pretty true. I so um, we'd yeah. like hand back the controller. Like I'd do a level, he'd do a level. If I was getting frustrated, he'd just take it. Like it was fine. Yeah. And I learned actually about a couple weeks ago, after like eight months, right, that he didn't actually have that game before I texted him. I was just complaining that my friend wouldn't let me play it. And he went out and he bought the games. Wow. That was, that was love and love. It was right? Love all I was like, that, that is yeah. the most adorable thing ever. I'm going to tell everyone this. And now Good. I am. Now so. you're doing it. That's great. But yeah, so his support has meant a lot. Um, and honestly, like, it's, it must, I can't imagine what it must be like, like having a girlfriend that like models at all. And like, I can't either because mine didn't. <laughs> well, I mean, being a drummer too, like 
it's definitely a male dominated thing. Well, that's what and I'm saying. I that's why that, it's like, so amazing that you I, I never wanted to so use amazing. my gender as an excuse. Right. I never wanted to be like, oh, girls who play drums, like, oh my goodness, I'm so awesome because I'm a female. Like, I wanted to let my playing speak for itself, right. and that was it. And not that there's anything wrong with embracing, like, being a, being a female, but I just was more about, like, the playing aspect of it and the drumming aspect of it. Sure. As opposed to the image of, associated with it. So, um, yeah, I can only imagine what it must be like having a, a girl that's drumming and a male-dominated thing, and then also having a girl that's modeling and everything. Like, I'm doing a lot, and I love, I love, like, acting and yeah. stuff, and I well, want to get more right, into that. We, so. we'll talk about acting. What acting have you done? Have you done any? Um, honestly, not really. Not yet. Okay. I've, I always, well, like, I have the backstage get into app. Yeah, and hopefully after and tonight you will. Well, maybe I'll keep you updated if I'm ever on it again. Well, but, that's, that's, um, no, that's what I'm. I'm I, that's fine. But what I'm getting at is, the more multifaceted you are, the more opportunities you're going to have. So now you might want to. You got you got this modeling portfolio. Peter's helping you really well. And I always try to give advice to my guests that'll behoove them down the line. You want there's so many groups on Facebook you can join for oh, acting, absolutely. like Hollywood East, this girl Erica. Oh Jones. yeah, I'm all yeah, yeah absolutely Hollywood because, East. Is yeah, great. you want yeah, or even Boston casting because. So, someone like you, you would be, I mean, my, I'm, listen, I'm no producer, and I'm, I'm no Harvey Weinstein either, so I mean, I'm happy to say that. <laughs> but I, what I'm telling you is, based on what I'm, based on, I think based on what I'm seeing here, is that you would probably be awesome in films. You got, you're outgoing, you're obviously, you know, you're prompt in detail, you know exactly what you need to do, you know, you're confident, and you got everything, you got it all. And now, now all you got to do is make the next move, and you got plenty of time to do it, so there's oh, no yeah, hurry. Absolutely. Right. I yeah. think that right now, like, I'm focusing, like, you know, music is awesome right. and modeling is awesome. And I look at the reasons why I do those things to motivate me to pursue them further. I think that with drumming, it's like, well, I, I love it. It's my passion. It's sure. what I've been doing for like half my life now. I love music and everything about it. And I like, I'll see a drumming video and like, I'll just stay in bed like 20 minutes in the morning scrolling through and just watching other people play drums. Like yeah. it's, it's awesome. Yeah, sure. And I think with the modeling thing, it's like, it's allowing me to use my desire to help other people and lift other people up. And like do that, actively doing that and being like, this is me accepting who I am. Yep. And it's not always easy. It's still like an ongoing journey. And I think self-acceptance isn't something that just stops. It's right. not a destination you really reach. You just kind of like you, you get there and you keep like you sustain, exactly. if, I guess. Sustain so, it and then increase it. That's exactly. Yeah. And I just w really want to help other people see their value and see how amazing they are. And yep. they don't need the approval from other people and they don't need someone to tell them like, this is what okay looks like. This is what beauty looks like. Like beauty looks like, like however you feel. Like if you feel beautiful, you are beautiful. Like that's how that works. Okay. So I think that like that's like the biggest thing. I can pursue modeling because I can help others and yep. music is just like my main passion that I've always loved to do. That's it. So you got to keep doing it. And also, yeah. so now listen, we were actually, we're almost out of time. So <laughs> you want to give a few shouts out to people that are going to see the show. Just do it real quick because, right. yeah, just say, hey, <laughs> hey so-and-so, you, you know, everyone that, your family, your, your friends, all right. The girl uh, let's watch, see. Whoever she is, I don't know, but that's cool. But I'm trying to think of who that was. You can't think of anybody. That's fine. You know. You know what? Um, shout out to my little sister, obviously, because right, she's like Savannah my best Banana. friend. Um, shout out to Dave because he's behind he's there right, right there, now, probably yeah. laughing at me. Um, <laughs> shout out to my parents, and my grandparents. Cool. Um, shout out to. I know, and honestly, like anyone who has supported me on any of this journey so far, and honestly, like anybody who hasn't, because if you haven't, like that's You're just motivated out. me. Support her. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like it's really motivating to yeah. like. I mean, loving yourself is like the most helpful thing you can. It's like the healthiest thing you can do for yourself it is to love is. yourself. Like, and that goes beyond accepting the skin you're in. Like, there's people that think they're really beautiful, but they don't feel. Like, they don't feel good on the inside. They don't feel fulfilled. They're not pursuing any passion right. or anything like that. And I think that it's important to accept yourself, like, in every level. Like, totally, accept yourself, yeah. like, yeah, obviously accept yourself physically. Be positive about your body. And at the same time, like, accept that what you love to do is valid and you should continue pursuing it if you like to do it and it makes you happy. That's right. But well, I hope you had a good time here. I had a great time here. Okay, yeah, well, listen. I hope this comes out awesome and that I don't watch yeah. this later hating it. Yeah, you, so, so watch for Mariah. More modeling, more music, and uh, maybe acting, and acting but... too, film, whatever. <laughs> so, are you ready to jiggy with it again? Yeah, hold on. Okay. I'm going to cap my water bottle. So you don't make get, a mess on the table. It's going to get crazy. Electrocute us with. I can't even snap, so Folks, edit in the sounds. She'll do great. Thanks for watching Topic Time. I hope you enjoyed Mariah Cummings as my guest. We'll have more great guests in the future. See you next time. Take care. Here we go. And here we go.
And that's it. All cool. Right.